There you are. Come on. Hi. <laughs> Would you like your food? Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. Not bad, eh? There's some more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is day three for you. He usually lands on my arm when I'm calling him for food, but I don't think he likes the camera so much. Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. There's one tree in my collection that's really heavy, both the pot, the soil, and the tree, and I dread lifting it every year. Today I'm going to repot that tree into a smaller, lighter pot, so I'll be able to lift the planting a lot easier, and hopefully it'll look better. I'll lift my heaviest tree and the pot onto the bench for the last time, and I'll get her repotted today in the bonsai zone. The tree is over here, and it's my ficus root over temple. So not only, it's in a cement pot, and the tree is planted on rocks to create the temple. So, and it has a really large volume of soil. So with the combination of a cement pot, a lot of soil, a stone temple, and the tree, it makes for one heavy bonsai. All right, here I go. Got to get your knees underneath this. There we go. Okay, set it down right here. I've got the tree on the bench now. And another way I'm going to make this whole planting lighter is instead of using regular bonsai soil, I'm going to use all perlite. And the reason for that is that the tree is gripped to the stone temple and it doesn't need support in the soil. Ordinarily, if you put a tree in perlite, it would be too light a soil and the tree would tip over unless you wired it into the pot. So I don't need any support for the tree. It's firmly gripped on the temple and the temple's not going anywhere. So I can use all perlite as a soil, which is quite a good soil. It, uh, has good water and fertilizer retention. It's porous, allows for good drainage, and it'll make it really lightweight, this planting. So everything I can do to take weight out of this planting will be a bonus in this case. When I originally planted the temple in this pot, I raised the temple up and kind of extended the slope of the temple with soil all around. And I planted a lot of ficus cuttings around it to kind of give that feeling that you're in the middle of a jungle. Sort of a distant view of this, so you kind of had to look between the trees to see the temple and the ficus on top of the temple. And I'm going to change my idea for planting it. I want a more close-up view. So I'm going to lower, this is the bottom of the temple. I'm going to have that more in line with the lip of the pot and kind of get rid of all my surrounding plants in that to kind of focus all your attention on the temple and the roots and the tree. I don't want all these distractions. I, I think it, it lost some of its power. It, instead of looking like a powerful tree on top of a temple, it looked too small because your attention was just everywhere. So I think, you know, by planting it lower, making this the focus and not everything else, it'll create a nicer looking planting. I'll go get the new pot now and show you what it looks like. Here's a look at the new pot now. So it's similar in size to the old pot, but it has these fancy rounded corners on it. It's uh, more of a reddy color, whereas the old pot was more of a, I don't know, a walnut color, sort of a uh, gray, gray brown color. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what it looks like in this new pot. Um, since I got this pot, I think I got it in very early spring. And it's darkened up the clay in it quite a bit. So that's kind of nice. It's starting to already get a bit of patina on it for a brand new pot. My first step for repotting will be to remove these little elm trees that are growing in it. And the ficus that's growing up here. The stones in the corner here 
are some of the original stones that I made the temple out of. They were the extras, and I put them around the temple to look like crumbled uh, rubble and that from the temple. So I'll collect those up and keep them, and I may use them in the new pot also. This tree has too much soil in the pot. Ideally, you want your soil to begin drying out by the end of a sunny day at least. Um, and this isn't the case with this tree. There's too much soil in here. If I water it thoroughly, it takes three or four days before the soil begins to dry out. So, you know, there's just not enough roots and too much soil, too much water in this pot to keep the tree really healthy. So I think putting it in this shallower pot with less soil the roots will fill the pot quickly and it'll start to dry the soil out a bit each day. So that allows you to give it more water and fertilizer. It should improve the health of the tree. Not just, you know, it's not just for looks. I see this quite often in young bonsai that the tree is over potted and the soil doesn't dry out properly. And uh, it, it leads to health problems. So you've got to kind of match the amount of soil with the amount of roots that the tree has. So as I said, your soil begins to dry out at the end of each day. Where these big pots get into real problems with this amount of soil is on rainy days. If you have three or four days of rain in a row and cloudy weather, this soil just stays so wet that it starts to rot the roots. So you kind of tailor, tailor your soil for the sunny days so it starts to dry out at the end of each day and then you know the wetter days you don't have to water as much i've also got liverwort growing in the pot here there's a patch there and somewhere else i saw some more over here there's some liverwort growing and that oh right here and that usually indicates that the soil is staying wet all the time it's not drying out my next operation will be to remove all these little trees, these elm trees, and this ficus from the planting, and I'll put them in separate pots. There's a look at the Chinese elm roots, just two roots, a few fine ones. So I'll put that in water until I get time to repot it. I'll cover up my ficus roots just to stop them from drying out while I'm getting the other trees out. So Here's a look at the tree now without all those other trees surrounding it. And you can see how it really puts the focus on the tree and the pyramid and the roots. It really, yeah, draws your eye in. And I, I think it's, it looks better like this. It was one of those days I went to get my perlite and I found I had run out of it. So I went to the store and they didn't have any in stock either. So I had to drive a few kilometers out of town. And finally, I found two bags of perlite. I'm going to set everything aside, so I'll remove the pot and everything, and then I can pull the tree out of the pot and put it on the table here and start the root work. All right, here I go. I'm going to remove the temple and the tree from the pot. So I'll have to find the bottom of the temple in here, which is up through here. And the other side, the bottom is down in here, like that. All right, here I go. I'm going to put a stone under this side. These roots are kind of separated here, just to lift it up a bit. Yeah, that's better. You can see how much soil was in the pot and the roots barely went into it, so it was just wasted space. This pot was made by Lewis from the bonsai at the RGB Club and it's a really nice pot. It's uh, very thin walled for concrete. I think it's reinforced with resin and uh, Yeah, it's not all that heavy. I think it's just all that soil in there makes it really heavy, especially when the soil's wet. So I'll, uh, I'll have to find a more uh, different tree to go in there, a hardy tree that can stay outside so I don't have to move it around all the time. Maybe I can keep it in the greenhouse over winter. I've got my root rake, and here I go on the roots. 
I've grown uh, bonsai in pure perlite before, seedlings, and they, they've stayed in the perlite for two or three years, and they do really well. So I think the only disadvantage of perlite is that it's very light, and if you use it as a soil, it's just too light. It doesn't anchor the tree in the pot, as I've said. So other than that, I think it's a really good medium to use as soil. So once I have all the, most of the soil removed, I'll move the tree over and I'll do a more thorough washing the roots and combing and then we'll start root pruning. So I'm tangling some of the roots back here. Okay, I think I'll move it over now and I might need, I might need a stone or something to put it on top so the roots kind of drape down. I'll see if I can find something to set it on top of. Maybe it upside down pot I think will work. All right I'll transfer the tree over to here. Like that. I can keep breaking it out then. So I, I built this temple. I cemented all the stones together on top of a ceramic tile. And the tiles lasted many many years now hasn't cracked or anything yet, so it provides a good foundation for the stones to kind of build your pyramid on. As I said, if this tree gets too large for the pyramid, I can always add to the bottom of it and make a larger pyramid. So the tree will always stay in proportion. I've got all the soil free from around the roots and the pyramid, so I'll rake it out with the root rake and then I'll start the root pruning. So I don't want a whole lot of root below the level of the pyramid because the pot is the pot's quite shallow so I want more of a spreading root system and a lot of these roots are quite thick that are going down into the soil so I want you know prune them off and get finer ramification because someday I may want to have you know these roots that come down off the temple I might want them kind of snaking across the surface of the soil so by cutting them off just below the level of the pyramid, I should get a lot of surface roots forming. I'll just wash the roots off first. I'll place this upside down pot and the pyramid and the tree on top of the turntable. I'll make it a lot easier. This custom turntable was sent to me by Adrian from Spinning Tree Boneside Turntables. I'll put a link to his website in the description below. All right, here I go with the root pruning. So I've got a root coming down the front here that divides into two at the base of the pyramid. I've got another root in behind here that's kind of tangled around it, which I want to sort out a bit. So I'll untangle that like that. And I think that one should probably come more over here, draping down. So this root here is starting to get very fat and bulbous. And not the greatest looking root in the world. So I think I'm going to prune it off just below the soil line here. Like that keeping you know the division here but hopefully I'll get new roots growing all around there this one I'll prune off here and here I've got one coming down here I'll prune off there a thick one out the side here that I'll prune off here it's tangled here there I've got some coming down here that I'll want to prune off here and here, like that. This front one, I wonder if I should prune it off shorter. I think I should, maybe to here. I've got a division here, but I think I've got to start it dividing earlier. Maybe to there. Oops. To there. That one's okay. This one needs to be shortened to here. Like that. 
And what about the back? That's been pruned once before, shortened, and you can see all the roots that have grown around the cut point. Um, I will want to sort them out a bit. This one's kind of crisscrossing in a funny pattern. I'll get rid of that. Like that. And then this one needs to be pruned off shorter than this one too. Like that. So that's it for the heavy duty trimming. And now I'll come in and prune all these light roots. So I'll just prune the really long ones. Slipping them back. Kind of shortening them so they're not too far out of control. Rotate that around. about got it. All the roots are kind of just slightly below the pot there or the bottom of the pyramid. Yeah. Yeah that looks pretty good for root pruning. A little shorter here. Okay let's clean that up again. My ficus root over temple is all ready for planting. I'll get the pot out now and get the perlite in the bottom. I've got the pot out there and I, I want to decide where to position the pyramid. Um, the tree kind of leans over to the right hand side, the trunk, and then it kind of goes vertical. Um, Eventually, I think it'll have a fairly balanced canopy on top of it. But I think right now, most of the mass is on the right-hand side of the tree. So I need to pot it to the left-hand side to kind of, kind of counterbalance that. So it's actually to the left now. I'll just... Maybe somewhere about there, just off center. I think it'll look good. And again, I'll probably planted more towards the back of the pot to give it more of a landscape feel on the front. But I'll, I'll try it out and see. First thing I've got to do is get my layer of perlite in the bottom of the pot. Well, the perlite's in the bottom of the pot, but uh, that's not quite right. So what you have to do with new perlite is you have to sift it. Um, you'll find there's every particle size in it from dust to really tiny particles to slightly larger particles to you know, the three to four millimeter particle size that we want, or one eighth of an inch. So I'll get out my screen and I'll sift all this perlite down to an even particle size of three to four millimeters, or one eighth inch. This is the screen I use for my soil. I just use one screen and I screen out all the fine particles. And you'll want to wear a dust mask when you do this because these fine perlite particles aren't good for your lungs. So. your fancy dust mask on and I can start sifting. There's a beautiful butterfly behind me here. All right. Pull the top off. Pour some in. Hold my breath and start sifting. And that's it. You got a nice particle size. I'll cut out some drainage screens for the holes in the bottom of the pot and then I'll put this sifted soil straight on top. I've got my drainage screens in place so now I can start adding the perlite. my very lightweight soil. I want to fill the pot so it's just below the lip of the pot. And then the pyramid will sit on top of here. I think that's a really good height 
for the soil. So I'll place the pyramid on top and we'll see how it looks. All right, here I go. Placing the pyramid in the pot. Offset a bit to the back. I'll try it there. See how that looks. I'm looking at the tree from the front now. And my first impression is, wow, I really like it. It's looking pretty awesome, I think. I think the height is good in the pot. I think the offset is good. I think the front to back position is good. I think we're a go for filling it in with more perlite. There's not a whole lot of roots to comb out here, but I will comb out what's there. Just kind of making sure everything's organized, that I don't have any you know, roots in the wrong places that crisscross each other too badly. I think I want this one out over here. I think that's looking pretty good. I'll uh, start filling it in with more perlite now. I think before I start filling in the rest of the perlite, I'll give it a watering just to wet all that perlite that's in there. So here I go. I'm adding more perlite to the planting now. That's looking like a good level for the soil. Really, really liking that. Kind of tapers away from the pyramid a bit. I just need a little more soil in the right hand corner there. And a bit at the back also. I'll give the planting another thorough water and I'll water it several times today to get all that water soaked into the perlite. So here I go. Now the test will be to see how light this is and if it's easy to pick up versus before which was my most difficult tree. This was even heavier than my avatar grove, my giant cedar forest planting. All right, here comes the test to see how hard it is to pick it up. So here I go. Ah, oh, it's pretty easy now. That's good. I'll finish up today by planting a layer of moss on top of the perlite. I've got a tray of water here with rainwater in it and I got a bowl of moss. So I'll soak the moss in the water here and then I can apply it around the base of the pyramid. I'll give the moss a good soaking. So I'll just water it from above. Make sure it's all watered and softened up. Some of these pieces were a little hard. And while that's soaking, I think I'll prune the top of the ficus. Here's a look at the front of the tree again. And I think I can prune the top canopy down a bit. I'm hoping there's new branches forming in here so I can take some of those longer ones, those longer shoots, take them back a bit. I'll have to see, so here I go. That's cleaned up the structure quite a bit up top. Got rid of a lot of branches that were crossing over top of other branches. Places where there's like three or four branches coming out from one spot. Reducing the height of the tree a bit. I removed a lot of the dead wood uh, when I did that hard pruning back in October. I got a few dead stumps and I pruned those off. So yeah, it's uh, looking much better, I think. It'll... Uh, Take some more refining to get the shape even better in the future, but we'll keep at it. I've got a few different types of moss here. I've got some really long, fluffy stuff that'll do kind of like bushes and that, and then I've got some flatter stuff. So I'll start applying the moss now. I am not going to have enough moss to do all this. I'll have to go collect more. 
I was looking around my bonsai trees to see if I could scrape any off of those, but I don't really have any trees to donate moss. They want to keep it for themselves, I think. So this moss, it helps keep the weeds down. If you just had the perlite, you'd get all kinds of weeds growing in it, and the moss kind of provides a protective layer. And I leave my moss on all year round on the trees. I, it's not just for the shows or display, it's part of the tree, part of the landscape, and I keep it on all year round. Now it's fairly easy to water. You can tell when it's drying out. Now, I think it's time for a moss bush here. Try it there anyway. Now, I've got a big clump of moss I can put over this side, I think. Right there. So you want to make sure your moss is really firmly pressed down into the bonsai soil and it's making good contact. Otherwise it just dries out and turns brown. Mossing is really fun. It really transforms the tree into a miniature landscape. Gives it that finishing touch. And once I start watering and fertilizing this moss, it'll green up really, really quickly. Especially if we get some rain, which we're expecting tonight. I went out to the front sidewalk and collected what moss I could find. And you can see how dry and crusty it is. It's uh, <laughs> not so green. So, now watch, I'm going to put it in the water and it won't green up instantly, but I think by the end of tonight, you'll see it starting to turn green. It's just kind of dormant there. It's still got a bit of a green tinge to it, but uh, certainly doesn't look very lush. After the moss is finished soaking, I'll apply it to the base. In the meantime, let's do today's updates. My first update for today is my ficus cutting of a cutting. And it's in one of the first 3D printed pots I ever made. And the pot is just made from PLA plastic, which is a biodegradable plastic. And after three years, it started to degrade. You can see the cracks in the front. One at the side here several at the back and it's just lost its structural rigidity and it's all falling apart. So that's just made with PLA plastic. The ones that are made with the NGEN plastic, they haven't deteriorated at all. They're just as strong as the day I made them. So yeah, so if you put the, now this has been in some pretty severe conditions. It usually sits in the greenhouse you know, which gets up to 40 degrees Celsius, which is way higher than this PLA is supposed to withstand. Um, it gets soft at those temperatures and starts to warp. So, you know, it's had an extreme life. It was, if it was in a air conditioned building under ideal conditions, I'm sure it would last a lot longer, but uh, yeah, so three years out of a PLA pot and yeah, it's not too bad. Um, you can always reprint it and uh, put it in the new pot. And the advantage of these 3D printed pots is if you want a slightly bigger pot, you just scale the pot up a bit and you can fit it directly into the new pot with a little bit of room to spare. So I am, I'm going to repot this ficus cutting of a cutting into this really nice Japanese pot. I'll show you that. It's a quite a bit bigger pot. So it'll go in, you know, something like that. It's a bigger pot, but I, I think it'll really suit the tree and it'll give the tree a little more strength to grow. Um, these ficus microcarpus are, I'd say they're sort of a medium sized leaf tree. So they need to be fairly large to, to look good as a bonsai. So I think this tree is ready to do a bit of growing and maybe get a little larger. And I think the bigger pot will do that for it. The second update for today is my baobab trees. And they're in the greenhouse. And here they are over here. So you can see I've got two that came up. The, uh, there's another seed over here, it just dried up and died. Uh, so it looks like I got two growing trees out of the five that I planted. 
So I'm just glad to get one even, so two is a bonus, so I'm really happy about that. The Peperomia cuttings that Ross gave me are doing really well. They're all growing really well. I don't think I lost any of them. I think there's a weed growing in it here, but uh, I don't know. I left that. I didn't know what it was, but I think it's just a weed, so I'll pull that out. There. Yeah, so they're doing really well. I added a little panda bear in there. Over on the side bench here, my geranium bonsai is in bloom. Really nice flowers on that. They don't smell at all, but it sure looks nice. I'll try and show you the base of the tree. Down in there. Yeah, so starting to get a little woody. I'll let it grow this summer and then in fall I'll cut it back to just kind of a trunk and we'll see what happens. But nice flowers on it. Julian's Bougainvillea is still beautifully in flower. The moss is nicely soaked now. And it looks even greener already. So I'll start putting that on the rest of the perlite here. All right, let's get some more moss on here. If you stay tuned after the video, I'll have an update on the orchard truck. I got some more work done to it. Got to make it better and better. It's becoming a bit of an obsession with me. So I'll keep adding the moss and uh, we'll come back when that's all done and see how it's looking and see if it needs you know, more variety in the moss. Maybe it looks too much like a mowed lawn. I don't know. We'll see what it looks like. Okay, are you ready here? Hello, Robin. Okay, there you go. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Yeah, you like that, don't you? Here's some more. I'm gonna come in for a pit stop. This is his third can of dog food. You can see he's already eaten quite a bit of that. Or she. I think you're a she. There's some more. Oh, yeah. I've got all the moss applied now. And I made sure it's all firmly pushed down. That it all contacts the perlite really nicely. And it seems to be that way. And I've watered it, you know, two or three times. So my next job, I want to pick out all the little pieces of perlite in it. So I just get out the tweezers and you pick that all out. Kind of spoils the illusion of scale when you see all those little chunks of perlite in there. The ficus root over temple is all done for today. I uh, I would have spent more time picking that perlite out, but it is going to rain any time, so I think I'd better just leave it at that for now. I'm sure the moss will grow over that perlite anyway. There's not too much of it left in the moss. Yeah, so there's the look of it, and it's quite different from what it was. The temple sure seems a lot lower. And I think that's better. I think it puts the focus more on the tree and less on the temple, or it's sort of equally balanced. Before it was all kind of temple and the tree looked fairly insignificant. So I think that's looking pretty good. I'll put it on the turntable and spin it around. That's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. Hi everyone, I'm here at a, a Automotive and I get to paint the underside of the bed on the truck. Let's go have a look. Here's the bed and it's all being repaired. Let's go underneath here and you can see the angle iron that's being welded in there. It looks really, really good. You can see it's stitch welded all the way across. And there's new plates put in where it was cracked through here. They, someone had cut it away here. So that's being repaired both sides underneath. And there's the view of the back now. That's all being fixed. And this side also. 
Got the patch in here, one in here. Over here, there's a nice patch there, and it's all sealed in here by the wheel well. So that looks amazing. And the tailgate's done, of course. So today, I'm going to come under side here, underneath, and scrape it all down, prime it, and paint it red. Should look pretty good. There's a look at the underside. You can see I've got a big job ahead of me. But I really just have to get this section because the wheel arches and that I can get any time. So it's just really, you know, underneath here. And the front here, because once that's on the truck, you can't get at that area. So I'll try and rub that down the best I can. Here's the rest of the truck. It's looking a little uh, <laughs> like it's missing something. And it's missing the bed. So here it is. Here's the frame and everything. I did bring my black so I can touch up, you know, the top of the exhaust here and any spots that I missed. So, yeah, if I get time, I'll come back and do some work on the, uh, the frame and the back of the truck here. I've got my dust mask on. Time to get to work. It's lunchtime now and I've been hard at work at the truck all morning. Let's go have a look and see the progress. This is the side of the bed that goes up against the cab. So I, there's a bit of surface rust in that and I dug out some of the seam sealer. It was starting to go rusty underneath and I painted in there, primed and painted it. So that's looking quite good now. If we go around to the back of the bed. So I painted all along the, uh, the back beam support there and I've got the first section of the bed here all primed so there's all the new work there it looks really good and I'm working on rubbing down panels two and three under here and making progress and the fenders just doing a little bit at a time and it's amazing working upside down how tired your arms get after a couple hours so I think I'll go home and get a bit of lunch and we'll come back at it. It's two in the afternoon now and I've got the tailgate primed. I, I'll, I'll go back and uh, do some custom work on this so just to stop it rusting. I want to get a coat of paint on it. And underneath I've got pretty well the whole floor primed scraped down and primed hopefully you can see it yeah like that so now i'm ready to put the color coat on the back here and as the uh, primer dries up front i'll keep keep painting it i uh i still have to do all on the wheel wells and everywhere still a lot of work to go I'm starting to get the color coats on the bottom of the truck bed. Let's go have a look. Here's the tailgate with a bit of red on it. And this is just temporary, as I said, until I get, uh, you know, all the final finishing done on it. Just to keep it from rusting and look half decent. So let's go underneath the truck now. I'll come in the middle of it here. And there it is with the color coat on underneath looking really nice so much better than all that rust underneath and if you know any rust starts showing through I'll just scrape it down again and repaint it but I think most of it will be quite good so I still got to do the wheel wells over here they'll be black I think and I've still got to paint the front section. I'm just waiting for the primer to dry a bit more. I finished painting underneath the bed and now we're going to lift it onto the truck. So here we go. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm letting go. I don't want my fingers in there. Like the frozen song. Probably not half bad somewhere in and around there until we get the bolts all kind of in. Oh, yeah, the wire. So the bed is back on the truck. It's almost in the right position. Just aligning all the bolts. I'll try and get you a view of underneath. It's looking pretty nice under here with its red bed underneath. Wow, looks nice. I won't want to drive it now. It's too nice for me. Lining up, Mike? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's probably where I'm going to start holding it down. Yep. So, yeah, if you look, if you look down it now, yep. the, uh, the body line it's a lot more it's a lot straighter oh yeah and it's you know it's even you yeah. can even tell down here too yeah much better oh yeah that's nice yeah we're almost at the end of a long day again got the truck back together looking really good it looks like a garage from back in the 70s Working on this brand new truck. I've got the truck back home now, and I think I'm a bit of a mess. I was looking in the mirror at my face and, and look at my legs. Like, I'm just covered in rust and dirt and everything, but the truck's all done. It's all back together, bolted in place. We even aligned the hood here. So we got all that gap closed up on the hood, so it fits really nice now. And the body's nice and straight now, so... And it's all painted underneath. I'll show you that. So, I'll just crawl in here. Look at that, eh? All nice red. I painted the wheel arches black. Yeah. So it looks pretty clean and painted underneath now. We even did the top of the exhaust while the uh, bed was off. Painted that black with uh, engine enamel. Yeah, so pretty well everything's painted underneath now. Looking really good. There's still plenty of small details to do on the truck. There's all kinds of fixing up to do. I've got to paint my patches on the inside and make those look a little nicer, grind the welds a bit and yeah, coming together nicely though. Yeah, I'll just work away at it, but it's coming along. I'd say it's about 90% sorted out. I'll go get the new, I'll go get, <clears throat> I'll go get the new pot now and show you what it looks like. Here's a look at the new pot. So, it's a little more. The old pot was kind of a, uh, what would you call that, a cut. But it's darkened. I've had it about a year now. And it's darkened up in color. Have I had it a year? No. Oh, cut, cut, cut. It, uh, there's no distractions with all that other trees growing in that. Okay, I've got all the soil removed around the base of the pyramid. The roots are kind of just freely hanging down. So now I'm going to, going to, <clears throat> I'm, oh, 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 oh. I'll finish up today by planting moss. All the, all the, all the, I'll finish up today by planting a layer of moss on top of the perlite. 